Let's go to Jeff Kilberg and get your thoughts on Penn Gaming. What do you say, sir? Well, Ty, you never want to catch a falling knife, but I want to be a buyer here. To contest this point, it's $100 lower, and certainly it has been challenging for them. But no doubt about it, when you look at the way this stock trades, it's trading at a premium. In comparison to its peers, it trades at a forward P-E ratio of 21. The industry is about 17. But I really think it's all about how they're able to produce more revenue. Now, certainly, they are having more operating costs, but I do think as you see the casino operator, I think when you talk about the gaming and the racing properties it owns, this is the pent-up demand. This allows the reopening trade, which we've been waiting for for quite some time. So I think Penn has the opportunity, but look at the 50-day moving average, Ty. I want to be a buyer here, but above the $50 mark, which happens to be the 50-day moving average, that's where I get conviction, and that's how it can run back up to $100, contingent upon Barstool Sports. All right, Jeff, stay right there. Let's turn now to Viacom CBS and Julia Borston. Julia, this stock, well, lower, but up 20% over the past month. Up 20% over the past month, but shares are off nearly 66% from 52-week highs. Viacom CBS's decline started last March. In fact, the stock lost more than half of its value in just four days, and there were a couple of factors that precipitate that. CEO Bob Backish issued new shares to raise as much as $3 billion. There were a couple of analysts downgrading the stock, questioning its value as a subscale player in the streaming wars, and it made an NF deal that included putting games on Paramount Plus, which analysts said would drive cord cutting, among other things. Now, you are right that the stock is up. It's actually up nearly 16 percent so far this year on news that is looking to sell its 50 percent stake in the CW network and on some bullish analyst notes. Deutsche Bank saying it's an attractive target for M&A and Bank of America's Jessica Reeve Ehrlich with a buy rating on the stock, rise, raising her fourth quarter streaming subscriber net edition estimates. She points to the next catalyst for Viacom CBS not being earnings results, but what strategy the company lays out in its February 15th investor event. Kelly? Interesting. All right, Julia, thanks. Jeff, the stock, like we said, is up 20% over the past month. Does that make you want to be a buyer? No, Kelly. And to Julia's point, she hit the nail on the head. This stock has not done anything in five years. On a five-year perspective, it's down 40%. So we need something to excite investors. It has $5 billion in cash, has a great portfolio from Showtime to Nickelodeon to BET to Comedy Central. But to Julia's point, they need to do something. We're looking for that forward guidance. I want to be a seller here. And on top of the fact that it's had a nice little bounce year to date of 16%, if you happen to own this, this is where you sell into this pop. Jeff, Sell the rip, buy the dip, Kelly. What, what about those? I mean, I've had this stock come up a number of times with our value investors who think this company is waiting and waiting to be opportunistic, waiting for the right opportunity, waiting to see how the media landscape settles. You know, maybe they're a buyer in some cases, maybe they're a target. What I mean, do you not give management more sort of benefit of the doubt here that there is some patience and strategy being employed? I appreciate that they're coiled and they're poised, but nonetheless, it's been five years. In this type of laggard, I agree with you, there's a value component, but I'd rather buy the stock at $40 than stay at $35 with no news. So I need some news. I need something tangible, Kelly, to get excited about this stock.